What is up, Scentsy fans? It's Patricia, and welcome to another week of Tester Tuesday, a spot where I review Scentsy scents, but you guys vote each week on the scents you want me to review. Now, the reviews are based on my home and my warmer setup and how I perceive the scent, but hopefully that will help you decide if the scent's going to work for you or not. And I always say, make sure you watch lots of reviews because everybody's home and nose differs. So, last week was a really interesting week because we had two things going on. First, there was pretty much a three-way tie for first place. I believe first and third were separated by three votes. Crazy. Three votes. The second thing was I said that votes were down. And what I meant was every fall and winter season with the new release, when they come out, Tester Tuesday votes just go up. It's always been the way it's happened. This year, the votes pretty much stayed the same, maybe even dipped slightly or it went up slightly depending on the week. But it wasn't that big boom that we usually get. So I'm just not sure why that was. And I know everybody's busy, but they're pretty much busy this time of year, most years. And we've been doing this now for five years. <laughs> so I just wasn't sure what the reason was. Now, the good news is I'm not going anywhere with Tester Tuesday. If you guys want to hear about scents, I will continue to warm and review them. It's become a part of my daily life. I don't know what I would do if I didn't have to warm sets for you and come and talk to you every week. So yeah, not going anywhere. I appreciate all your votes. I appreciate everyone that comes week to week. Now, one thing I would like to say, some people say, well, I don't want to vote because I'll just listen to whatever you talk about. The reason I like for people to vote is because it tells me what scents people are most interested in and what scents people are not interested in. And that can kind of reflect in the general public, what scents might sell well and what scents might not. So that's why. Anyway, let's get into the reviews. So let's talk about our first place scent this week. It is Palo Santo and Cinnamon. This one at 21.7% of the vote is a beige colored wax. It's just shy of medium on cold sniff and Scentsy has put this in a woods category and it's a new release scent. The scent description says, Palo Santo energizes Italian bergamot accented with clove leaf and cinnamon bark. So we have a wood and we have a citrus, which is Italian bergamot. And we have clove leaf and cinnamon bark, which are variations of spice. Now on cold sniff, I felt like this smelled like a, like a warm, gentle, what do I have? Gentle, golden, masculine, cologne based scent. A little bit of an older gentleman wearing it. It changed when it warmed. And I must say, I really liked it, this one. I even liked it better on warm. So that is great news. So it reminds me of... When I was in junior high, we had a wood class and I made this cutting board. And I feel like the wood <laughs> from this reminds me of my cutting board that I made in grade seven. Um, so I, I picture taking my cutting board home and taking a cinnamon stick and like grating it. I don't really know if I get clove leaf, but I definitely get a special cinnamon. And I, I joked around, I said, it's almost like a fairy came by, like I left my grated cinnamon on the cutting board and I, you know, went to do something and went to bed. And it's almost like at night, a fairy came by and like sprinkled it with some sort of magical <laughs> influence because the spice character in this is very different to me. It's almost like it's got like, you know how fairies are like, Loo -loo -loo? well, that's what it feels like. It feels like a special magical <laughs> um, spicy blend. I know that's very vague, but that's the best way I can describe it. Now, the cinnamon spicy magical blend with the wood is happening at the beginning. And then the spices kind of gradually leave and you're left with more of the wood base. That reminds me a lot of a variation of like a, a blonde wood and moonflower or even like almost like a satin sheets with a little tiny bit of incense kind of component. So Sensi's Palo Santo used to be a very charred, slightly peppery, spicy, like burnt type of wood. This is not the same Palo Santo. If it is, they've totally re-doctored it up. So just like letting you know that from, from my experience. All right, so let's talk about performance. I decided to warm this in Ryan's room because he smelled all three scents this week and he liked this one the best. Strength and throw in his room was about seven out of 10 and I left it going for two continuous days, almost a full 48 hours and I took it out. Now here's the wax. It has that wood, like gentle wood, Palo Santo, you know, sandalwood kind of tone blonde wood kind of tone. Not my favorite part of the scent. I like it early on. Now in the TV room, I used the other four cubes that you see missing here. There's two warmers there. I have a note. When I went to check it on hour two, it was about four out of 10. I went back to check it around hour four to five. 
it arose almost to a seven out of 10. So I think this one's a slow builder. Now that is a bigger space. So we can factor that, that in. I left this going 36 hours over two days and I did turn it off in between one time there. So I think if you're someone that likes satin sheets or blonde wood and moonflower and you like like fancy spice medleys that are kind of hard to explain, then you would like this. Now, I think if you don't like Scentsy's Palo Santo, you could still try this. And if you're unsure of the spice, you might be able to be okay with this because it is a special different type of spice. I can't quite pinpoint it, but it is different to me. Now I would say bedrooms, dens, offices, rec rooms, this would do really well. Probably not open concept worthy for me, but if you wanted a gentle hum in the background, it might be better. Now, I just wanna say this was a surprise hit for me. I really liked it. Will I repurchase this one? I already did. I repurchased one. And if this was to return next year, I'd probably pick up one a year if I was able to keep on par with warming that, just because I have so much wax. But yeah, I, I thought this was a pleasant surprise. So that is Palo Santo and Cinnamon. All right, let's talk about scent number two for the week. It is Frosted Cedar. This is the color of the wax right here, kind of like a mossy green. This one had 21.4% of the vote. It's between light and medium on cold sniff. And since he has put this in the fruity category, um, you could also put it in fresh. You could almost even put it in woods. It's one of those, let's put it in every category type of scents. The description says, red delicious apple adorns towering white cedar in a blanket of creamy vanilla. Now, once I get this in the warmer, it immediately reminded me of a couple of things. There's the apple tone. I have a note. It's a sweet syrupy apple. It comes across to me like an artificially derived apple. It doesn't smell like a natural apple to me. It smells like kind of like the apple you would get in Apple Teeny Splash. But really, early on in my wax journey, I bought a D-stash from someone and there was a Rose Girls apple scent and I remember it was green and it, it reminded me a lot of this. Now, I find they mentioned vanilla, and when you put vanilla in with a fruit, sometimes it makes it almost feel like a candy sweetness, a candy artificial sweetness, and I would say yes. Yeah, it doesn't smell like an authentic apple to me. It smells like a candied vanilla apple sweetness syrupy tone. The cedar comes out later, I think more on day two. And I remember coming into my room, and I was in the bathroom, and I had the warmer kind of going behind where the camera is, and I was in the bathroom, which was over there, and I'm like, why the hell am I smelling wood? <laughs> and it was the cedar note from this. Now, I'm just going to tell you, there's this weird note for me early on. I didn't really smell it in my room because I was in and out, in and out, but I smelled it in Drew's room. I have a note here. It, I have a note. It says, extra note. Whoa. <laughs> it was not a perfumey aspect, but it was kind of like a shampoo or a soap or a lotion kind of smell. And there was also a little bit of a mossiness mixed in with that artificial green apple tone. But it was the shampoo, body cream, soap, and it was kind of like very sharp. And it was like, <laughs> and it was like bothering my nose. So I keep thinking, am I gonna keep smelling that? And, and obviously that went away, but but now I'm thinking, if I buy this again, am I going to smell that again? Like, because I liked it, I liked the other parts, but I didn't really like that. But anyway, let's talk about warm. Now I'm going to say, to me, this was a shocker because this warmed a lot stronger than I thought it was going to. So let's talk about that. I warmed two cubes here in my bedroom, and uh, I think it's called the Keep Going, Keep Growing. It was an incentive warmer. It's a ceramic unglazed, so it's a good little performer. Seven and a half to eight out of ten at its peak. I left it going two days, tried it a third day. So at the end of the first day, originally it was seven and a half to eight at its max. It was about six out of 10. Then I left it going, that was 10 hours. And then I left going another 22. So I would say for the first 32 hours, it was a good little performer. And I, I did try it yesterday and I just felt like it, I didn't really pick it up the greatest, but it might just been my nose. All right, Durr's Room, Holy Hannah. This was like nine out of 10 for four cubes in Durr's Room. And the first day I left it going a full 24 hours, and I turned it off. And then I, I have it still going down there now. And I would say it's probably like about a four to five out of 10. So we're on day two. And I, I don't know longevity because I did go away this uh, Labor Day weekend and I had to kind of finagle my warming. So I would say performance is definitely average to, you know, for longevity and probably above average for me in strength. I think if you like, if you, or if you could picture Apple Teeny Splash mixed with like a Fearless by Nature and a little bit of a cedar, then that, that's kind of what you get. I would say medium to large spaces. And the reason I say this, 
for me personally, if I were ever to get another bar, I would probably try my open layout because I almost need that, the airiness of it to just kind of like air it out and let it do its thing. In Drew's room, it, it was just too much in that room. Other than the weird note, I did really enjoy this. So I'm just a little scared of the weird note that I got earlier on. So I'm not sure if it'll be a repurchase for me, but performance was fine. So that is Frosted Cedar. All right, let's talk about our third place scent for the week with 20.6% of the vote. It was Fall Feeling. This one is an orange colored wax, kind of like you see here. It's between medium and medium plus on Cold Snip and Scentsy has put this in the fruity category. So the scent description says, Fresh blood orange and sugared cranberry cozy up with juniper sprigs and a splash of sparkling clove on a perfectly crisp day. There's a little bit of a word salad going on. A lot of notes there. Maybe for me a little too many notes. <laughs> I wasn't really feeling the fall feeling, but I'm going to review this for you. All right. So I'm going to break it down. The first thing I get the most of is the blood orange. I'd say maybe 50% of the scent for me is blood orange. It reminds me a little bit of sips of cider in that respect. Then I wasn't sure, but I would say maybe 20% each of the sugared cranberry. And I actually interpreted that as an apple cranberry. And I wrote that down. And when I looked up the notes, I was like, oh, I'm wrong. Um, and then it said 20% juniper sprigs. And I knew there was a tree note there and I wasn't sure what it was. It is juniper sprigs. For me, juniper can be hit or miss. Sometimes it comes across as soapy or strange. <laughs> foreshadowing anyway and then we have sparkling clove I'm not sure why they put the sparkling with the clove when it, it made more sense to go with the cranberry but anyway I'm not sure what sparkling clove is but I don't know if I get clove I get a spice I get a spice medley it's one of those like medley like citrus fruity tree spice medleys but there's a lot going on and the juniper reads a little bit of, I have a note here, it's shrill. <laughs> shrill, perfume, body care, soapy floral, extra tone, early on, that's, I really didn't care for. I have a note, I didn't think it was a well-blended scent. For me personally, the scents don't all mingle and like meld together the greatest. So I don't really think that I will be repurposing that. I'm just gonna jump to the cheese, but let's talk about performance. So, um, I used the whole bar. Now, what happened was I went away for the Labor Day weekend and I still hadn't warmed this in the second spot. And I thought to myself, once I tried it in my mudroom and laundry room, well, let's talk about that first. I tried it in my mudroom and laundry room, which is a side entrance of my home and has a 25 watt ceramic bulb warmer. It does great. Strength and throw was like eight out of 10. And I left it going 25 hours and then I stopped it. I'm, I've resumed, I resumed it yesterday afternoon. I can smell it, but it's, it's definitely faded. All right, so then I thought to myself, do I want to warm this when I go to New Brunswick? Because we're staying in a little chalet. It's like a two bedroom cottage, but you know, it's, it's a good little size. I said to my husband, like, how many square feet do you think that is? He's like, maybe like 500, 600. I'm like, okay. Um, but I thought, I don't, I don't want to smell this. And then the other thing I thought is what if, because my husband's family, they're always coming over and coming over. And I thought if they come in, it's going to blow them out. <laughs> and they're going to be like, what the heck are you doing? You sensey lady. So instead I, I picked cedar cider and then I came home last night. As soon as I got home, I started plowing through and putting this in the warmers and my husband was making fun of me, but I was like, <laughs> I gotta do what I gotta do. All right, so I put this in 430 yesterday. Strength and throw was between seven and a half and eight max. And I just let it go because I thought I don't have a lot of time. I just gotta let go. Well, here we are. It's probably, this is the latest I've probably ever filmed Tester Tuesday. And I think it's like six o'clock now. So it's been going about... 25 and a half hours. I can still smell it. It's definitely less now because when I cooked like a, um, a pasta with a little bit of garlic and onion. So that's kind of killing the vibe a little bit, but performance on this was just fine. Like, I don't think anyone's going to suffer and not be able to smell this. It's just whether or not you're going to like it. So I think if you like sip cider that you might want to do like a wax war and see which one you like better. This is a little bit more going on. If you like LaSalle Wonderland, but you want to switch it up, maybe try this. I think open concept worthy for sure. And at least medium sized spaces, it might be too strong for small. And it's just not one that I'm loving. I'm just not feeling the fall feeling. So will I be repurchasing this? No, but I'm glad to have give, given it a try, of course. All right, I have five cents in my little bag. I removed Friends. We will probably get to it eventually, but I figured where it wasn't available, we're just gonna put it off to the side a little bit. 
So I have five cents left, and I'm actually going to throw in at the end two of the villains that we haven't reviewed on Tester Tuesday. I probably did do an informal review, but we'll we'll add these two in and, and give them a chance because they are coming towards the mid part of September. I forget the date, but we're coming coming up on it. All right, so set number one. Oh, basically, uh, let me tell you how it works. If you're new to my channel, you're gonna pick two different sets by early Wednesday morning. Put your votes down in the YouTube comment section. Always check the pinned comment because this week I had a lot of votes come in late and I always feel bad because I always calculate my percentages and stuff. If it's like Thursday or later, you're definitely too late, but early Wednesday is usually the cutoff. And always find my Instagram post to put your, your two votes there. All right, set number one, Cranberry and Cardamom. That's a new release. Set number two, Midnight Mahogany. Set number three, Red Currant Reef. Set number four, From the Harvest, Fall into Love. Set number five, Frosty Air. And we'll just put the two villains down in here and see which villain is gonna... <laughs> I gotta try to like move them around so I don't, I'm not biased. Set number six, oh, is just one bite, and that is the Evil Queen. So thanks for spending the last few minutes with me. I appreciate everyone voting. So please, if you can, put your two votes in. Take care, and I will see you guys in the next video.